Much as I have heard various and new various rumors that my dear wife and my sweet sister-in-law Sue that we have been drumsticking and ham hocking to excess at your various homes over the holidays, <laughs> I hereby retaliate by inviting all 36 of you to our house one year from the day for a big turkey and ham dinner on Thanksgiving. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. Montgomery, why in the world did you issue an invitation like that? Look, a year from now, they will have forgotten the whole invitation. We haven't got the money to feed 36 relatives. Why, you big blabbermouth, you never should have had that second glass of clam juice. <laughs> Which nobody can deny. <laughs> And we're going to have 36 relatives here at dinner, thanks to you shooting off your mouth a year ago. What do you intend to do about it? Well, there's only one thing to do. Put up the quarantine sign and hide under the bed again. <laughs> I know they're going to be hungry, but I don't think even they will wade through the bubonic plague to get to the giblets. <laughs> to buy food for these 36 relatives. Then you better find it. Because on Thanksgiving Day, this house is going to be filled with warmth and love and southern hospitality if I have to break every bone in your body to get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do the best I can. But as General Lee said at Gettysburg, I've had better days than this. <laughs> I need at least $50 for the dinner. And after all, there's that old proverb, what good is a friend if you can't jip him? <laughs> Come in, it's open. Hi, Kelvin. What are you doing up here anyway, Colonel? Cause I'm worried about you spending this gala Thanksgiving holiday season alone. You know, it made me sad. It did, huh? Oh, yeah, Calvin. Me and Maggie Bell and Sister Sue was talking about you only this morning. About you spending the holiday up here, all alone in your room. Well, come to think of it, it does get lonely now and then. Sometimes I regret setting those rat traps. <laughs> but what are you driving at, Colonel? What am I driving at, Calvin? I'm inviting you up to my place for Thanksgiving dinner with all the gracious Claxton clan. Well, now, wait a minute, Colonel. But how much is the price? Well, what we call a season ticket, son, uh, comes to about $50. I'd like to come, but all I got is $3 and a quarter. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't afford your generous southern hospitality this year. <laughs> well, now, to tell you the truth, Calvin, I don't know whether we're going to have a dinner or not. I'm in a spot. I've invited 36 relatives for dinner, and I don't have the wherewithal for the grub with all. So unless I get some free food from someplace, 
I'm in big trouble. You know, Colonel, I saw an ad in the paper here this morning. Free food. Let me see where that is. Here we are. Yeah, give me that paper. Look at that. Hmm. 75 pounds of free food, including ham and turkey, with the purchase of a $375 deep freezer. That's no good, Calvin. In order to get the free food, you've got to buy the freezer. Yeah, you haven't got 375 smackers. Yeah, the trouble, the, uh, wait a minute. I just noticed in the small print here. Here in the ad, it guarantee within 30 days of purchase, if the customer is dissatisfied, your money will be cheerfully refunded. Calvin, that's my angle on getting the free food. Come on, we'll get right down to the deep freezer store. You think this thing is going to work? Work is the greatest idea in the world, Calvin. Okay, but the last time you had the greatest idea in the world, we ended up spending the weekend as guests of the local gendarme. <laughs> store, Calvin. Yeah. Now explain to me how we're going to get this free food. Now look, Calvin, I give the fella this no good check here for $375. We take the freezer home and we take the food out of it. Then we bring the freezer back to the store and get our money back before the man has a chance to put this check in the bank. <laughs> now if that's not a great scheme, I'll eat my hat. Yeah, well, you better get out to bicarbonate. I think you're going to be nibbling on your fedora before this is over. <laughs> oh, here comes the fellow now. Watch the old colonel go into action here, boy. Hey, may I help you, sir? Uh, indeed you may, sir. I am Colonel Montgomery J. Claxon of the Nashville Claxons. Colonel ex officio of the Breckenridge County Zoos. That's all him. I'm just plain Calvin Burside. Well, how do you do, both of you? Uh, yes, mister. Uh, we would like to buy one of those deep freezers like you've got advertised in the newspaper here. The kind with the free food and the cheerful refund and guarantee. Oh, yes. We give the free food and the guarantee with all our models. Now, here's a lovely model here. It combines the best features of the... Uh, we'll take it. <laughs> uh, here's the check. Well, you certainly made your mind up in a hurry. This certainly is a fast deal. You're not kidding, mister. It's an old southern custom. <laughs> Uh, just one more question, mister. When does the store close? At 5.30. Hmm, it's 5 o'clock now. What do you think, Calvin? Well, we might strain ourselves, but I think we can make it. <laughs> Be seeing you. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. Well, thank you. Uh-oh. Here comes the fellow that sold it to us. 
You know something? He doesn't look so happy about the whole thing, neither. Why, <laughs> Colonel Claxton, what's this? You're bringing the freezer back? Yes, sir, we are dissatisfied with it. You're dissatisfied with it? Uh, just a minute. You picked up the freezer at 5 o'clock, and you're bringing it back now at 5.20? Yeah, we'd have been here sooner, only we got caught in traffic. <laughs> uh, look, mister, uh, we want our money back. Uh, we are dissatisfied with the freezer. Uh, just a minute. You let me see. You didn't bring the food back. We weren't dissatisfied with that. No, that makes us very happy. <laughs> Look, mister, we are dissatisfied with the freezer. Now, will you please stop shouting at us and kindly refund our money? I am not giving you your money till you bring back the food. Mister, show us where it says in the paper that we got to cheerfully refund the food. Look, I want that free food back that was in the freezer. Well, why must we bring back the free food if the free food is free with the food freezer? Because the free food is only free with the food freezer if you pay the full fee for the food freezer. <laughs> yeah, but if you give the free food with the food freezer... No, stop it! Please, look, I want my food back. Now, wait a minute here, sir. It's not your food. It's our food. You gave us free food. It was an inducement for us to buy the freezer. That's the way you run your business. Oh, see here, this is ridiculous. You've got to give me that free food. My dear sir, we are not in business to give away free food. <laughs> no, the colonel's right. That's your racket. Yeah, if you want any free food, go out and buy your own freezer. No, look, I don't want any free food. And we don't want to give you any, so what are you arguing about? Look here, I've got to have that food back. You want to take our free food away. That's right. All right. Well, now, let's analyze what you're doing here. You want to take something away from us that is free. Free like the air we breathe. Like the liberties we enjoy. Like the freedom of speech. Like the freedom of the press. The freedom to vote and salute the flag. Mr. No one can take away these rights from us. What kind of an un-American joint are you running? Well, now that you put it that way, I... No! What am I talking about? It's my own food. Look, I want that frozen food and that ham and turkey back here by tomorrow morning, or I'm turning this whole thing over to the police. You mean that you would bring the police into a thing like this? I certainly would. Well, that's all I want to know. I'll have the food back the first thing in the morning. Come on, Calvin. Hmm. Looks like these guarantees don't mean anything anymore. What you gonna do now, Carl? Only one thing I can do, Calvin. I'll wait till Maggie Bell and the sister get to sleep tonight, and then I'll take the food out of the icebox. <laughs> We must be careful that between now and in the morning some sneak thief don't come up here and clean out the icebox. <laughs> well, if they're going to make off with our ham and turkey, they're going to have to climb another two flights of stairs. Well, of course, if the people, uh, if the sneak, uh, 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 what was that? Montgomery, our icebox wasn't big enough to hold all that food, so Mrs. Conway on the top floor volunteered to keep the frozen and the ham and the turkey upstairs in her icebox. Yeah. And I don't think any sneak thief's gonna bother it up there. Cause Mrs. Conway's husband is a police sergeant. Hmm, <laughs> uh, excuse me, I think I'll go out in the kitchen and sharpen up the carving knife. Why do you want to do that? The dinner isn't until tomorrow. I know. But first thing in the morning, I may have an appointment to cut my throat. <laughs> I gotta get that food back in that store by tomorrow morning or I'm in a mess. I'll never get it out of Mrs. Conway's apartment. And her husband is a policeman. Hello, Oliver Wendell Clark speaking. Hello, Oliver. Am I to 
disturbing you? <laughs> no, you're not disturbing me. I was just watching television. Do you know they actually have people on there talking like animals? It is completely unbelievable. I'm sure it is, but I'm in a mess, Oliver. I gypped a fella out of a ham and turkey. And a whole lot of frozen food. Now, he says if I don't bring it back, he's gonna make trouble for me. Well, only one thing to do. Take it back. I can't. Maggie Bell stored the food in Police Sergeant Conway's icebox. Police Sergeant, eh? Colonel, you'd better not tamper with that refrigerator in person. What you need is some puffy poltroon to purloin the poultry. What do you mean? A real jerky to swipe the turkey. <laughs> yeah, Calvin's in this mess up to his neck. And I might as well push his head under the quicksand. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Oliver. You're welcome, my friend. <laughs> And the next act on our big shoe tonight is an act I just brought over from Europe. Let's really hurt for them, big, big folks. Fifi, the poodle, and our performing people. How does he get away with that stuff? <laughs> Listen, Calvin, this is the roof of the apartment house, and the Conway's apartment is on the top floor right underneath where we are walking now. Oh, golly, Colonel, it's awful dark up here. Now, explain to me how we're going to get into Sergeant Conway's kitchen. This skylight is right over the kitchen. We are going to lift the top up, and that'll give us a perfect way for you to get down in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I... Now, wait a minute, Colonel. You started out with we and us. But somewhere near the end of that sentence, you passed participle me up the creek again. <laughs> I'm not going. Now, listen, Calvin, let me explain the plan before you go off half cock like some Yankee. <laughs> when you get down in the kitchen, I'm going to lower this basket down to you on the rope. All you got to do is to put the turkey and the ham and the frozen food in the basket. And I'll haul it up. You see, I got the dangerous part of the job. Uh, you're up here, and I'm in the policeman's kitchen. Explain to me how you got the dangerous part of the job. Simple, Calvin. I'm up here. Now, suppose something happens. I'm trying to get away. I might get panicky and run off the edge of the roof. But you, being trapped down there in the kitchen... You won't be able to run any place and hurt yourself. Yeah. Well, now, that's mighty thoughtful of you, Colonel. Come on, let's get the skylight open. Hello, Claxon resident. Mrs. Claxon, this is Sergeant Conway upstairs. You know what your husband is doing up on the roof of the building? Montgomery? On the roof? Why, no. Well, I saw him and that fat friend of his going up there a few seconds ago. Up there. Well, I think I'll just go up and have a look around. <laughs> Say, Kelvin, how you doing down there in the kitchen? Fine, Colonel. I'm just beginning to load the frozen food from the ice box into the basket. Just beginning? You've been down there ten minutes. What you been doing? Making myself a pot roast sandwich. <laughs> I wonder where he keeps the ketchup. Listen, you dummy, keep your mind on your business. You want that policeman to catch us? Yeah, I'll go out the back window and come up the fire escape. Boy, it sure is dark up here. Well, anyway, it's working fine. Sergeant Conway must be out. Things are... Hmm. What step? Sounds like somebody walking on the roof here. Oh, it's Calvin coming up to help me with the rope. Hmm. Sounds like he stopped walking. How you doing up there, Colonel? Uh, fine. Give me a hand with the rope and, uh, uh... Mm, that's funny. Calvin's feet are walking up here on the roof, but his voice is still in the kitchen. He must have left in an awful hurry. Yeah, that's what he did. Hmm. 
That doesn't sound like Calvin Morgan. Those are the flattest footsteps I ever heard. <laughs> but there's got to be Calvin up here on the roof. Who else? Colonel, I say, how are you doing up there? Hmm. Calvin, uh, where are you? I'm here. I knew you here, but are you here, here, or here, there? <laughs> Colonel, I'm down here in the kitchen. Are you up there on the roof? Yeah, but son, what I wouldn't give to be home in bed right now. <laughs> Oh, uh, 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 Sergeant Conway, fancy running into you up here on the roof. Uh, uh, sunbathing perchance? Waxon, what are you up to here on the roof? Uh, me, uh, nothing. I just, uh, well, I, I, I was, uh, I, I came, uh, I went to, uh, uh, <laughs> Waxon, I need an explanation. Well, I need one as bad as you do. You <laughs> sure you're not up to something? All the way, Colonel, before that flatfoot Conway finds out what we're up to. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. There's someone down in my kitchen. Yeah, must be a sneak thief. My advice to you is to shoot first and ask questions later. <laughs> now, I'll get out of the line of fire before you start blazing away. I'll see you later. Blackson, I think we'd better go down to my apartment and talk things over. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that's a good idea. Yes, sir. And the first thing I'm going to do when we get down there is call your wife. Call my wife? Tell me something, Sergeant. If I made a break for it, would you shoot me? Of course not. Hmm, I thought I had a loophole there for a minute. I was going to run. <laughs> That's the whole story, Myrtle. Sergeant Conway caught us breaking into his kitchen. Oh, that's a shame. But what did Maggie Bell say when she found out? Oh, Maggie Bell doesn't know anything about it. The colonel pleaded with the sergeant not to tell her. Yeah, well, what's he going to do about the man in the frozen food store? <laughs> the colonel's going to stick to his guns. I'm meeting him at the deep freeze store in an hour. After all, the food was free, and that's that. Well, I still think the man's going to want the food back. The colonel says he doesn't care what the man says. The colonel guaranteed me that we're going to have a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner. Have another slice of ham. Didn't I tell you, Calvin, we'd have a lovely dinner on Thanksgiving? I like the dinner all right, but the judge says we're going to have to spend five more days in this iron deep freeze. <laughs> oh, hi, Colonel. Oh, hello, Kelvin. Say, how did Maggie Bell and Sister Sue react to your little vacation in the pokey? Well, they were pretty upset, Kelvin. Maggie Bell said it was the worst family disgrace since Uncle Braxton Claxton was a streetcar conductor and the inspector caught him with his high-button shoes full of nickels. <laughs> you know what I've been thinking, Calvin, where we went wrong trying to get that free food without buying the freezer. The next time, what we ought to do is to buy it on installments. <laughs> And when the time payments come due, we adjust... Uh, Calvin. I say Calvin. Uh, hey, 